And that, as much as anything else, led to my drinking problem. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another video on drinking age movies. This time we're going to talk about our look ahead for 2019's movies and our breakout stars. With me today is Manny Classic, the yep. chef, Joe Tapia, that <laughs> yeah. and last but not least, the man of constant hatred, Paul Workman. Sweet. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about our movies that we're looking forward to in 2019. Two movies in each of the three seasons, spring, summer, and winter. Uh, but we are not going to talk about any of the movies that have a big name. So no superheroes, no Star Wars, none of those. Uh, but we're going to start right off the bat with Paul and his first pick for spring movies to look forward to. All right. Well, I'm going to start out with the film that I'm probably the most excited for for the year. And hopefully I won't get Wreck-It Ralph 2 on this. But I'm excited for the Lego movie, too. Uh, Lord and Miller have proven that they can do sequels with 22 Jump Street. And they have written this film. They're not directing it like they did with the first one. Uh, they are leaving the directing duties to Trisha Gum, who is the head of story on Lego Batman. And uh, Mike Mitchell, who did Sky High, one of the best superhero films not based on a comic book. Uh, and then also the cinema classic Deuce Bigelow, Male Gigolo, and yeah. the absolute worst Shrek film, <coughs> Shrek 4. So you can see where I might be a little... Uh, Wait, there was a fourth Shrek movie? Exactly my <laughs> point. There's also a spinoff called Puss in Boots. That's a fact. Um, so uh, with Lord and Miller still writing and the head of story of Lego Batman, which I feel is one of the best superhero films of the last 10 years, I, I feel this can be a good sequel. I'm hoping that it's a good sequel, and if Wreck-It Ralph 2 shows me anything, it's that expectations can always be crushed when your for friends force you to go see Wreck-It Ralph 2. <laughs> Michael. Manny, what, what's the first movie you're looking forward to in the spring? Right, so <clears throat> my first film is a movie that's been working its way through some film festivals and stuff like that. It is The Invisibles. It is the story, uh, as told by Klaus Raffel, of uh, Berlin during 1943. Goebbels declares it free of Jews, yet 17,000 Jewish people exist. And the story focuses on four of them who hide in plain sight by being so youthfully <coughs> reckless that nobody thinks that they're Jewish. They... Uh, they then take this and start moving into kind of forging documents and literally lying to the government and telling them that they're Aryan war widows and stuff like that. It's a brilliant film from everything that I've been reading about it and kind of seeing about it. And it's this type of docudrama that I think holds a lot of sway. Uh, this year, Mary, Queen of Scots and The Favorite both, you know, kind of got high on our list respectively. I think this might be another one that's in a league roughly the same. Joe? Uh, my first pick for the spring uh, movie season was uh, Us, directed by Jordan Peele. Um, Paul has, has said this, honestly, and I believe it too. I'm sure a lot of you believe it. Get Out is one of the best directorial debuts of any director in... Um, in the last uh, few decades, easily. Yep, um, Us is <clears throat> his follow-up, uh, another social commentary film uh, with a horror spin to it, uh, starring uh, Winston Duke, who uh, his breakout role was in uh, Black Panther earlier last year, uh, and also starring, I just I just found this out, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, uh, who... Broke out in uh, an Aquaman as Black Manta. Yeah. Uh, really excited about that. And then also uh, Lupita Nyong'o. Uh, she's also in it as well. Um, the plot is basically this couple. They just released a trailer. This couple and their kids go to the beach. Uh, beach vacation. 
and they're confronted by their doppelgangers and they're crazy and they're out to kill them. Um, I'm in. That sounds great. In fact, Jordan Peele, whatever you do, I'm there. Always. Uh, really, really looking forward, forward to that Twilight, Twilight Zone. Zone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, us. And that leaves me for my first movie is The Upside, which is Nicole Kidman, Kevin Hart, Brian Cranston, supposedly based on a true story, so we're probably going to call it a docudrama as well, a docu-comedy, um, about a man who's confined to a wheelchair, and Kevin Hart basically finagles his character's way into being the guy's arms and legs and taking care of him, and it looks just to be both a true treat and absolutely hilarious at the same time, so I'm just looking forward to it, especially now that Nicole Kidman has remembered she knows how to act. Yes. Um, plus, I like Brian Cranston, and Kevin Hart's always had solid comedic talent with pretty much everything he does. Yeah. So, and continuing the spring theme, we're going to go ahead and jump back over to, to Joe and let him talk mm-hmm. about his next one. So, for my next pick, um, it's going to be Cold Pursuit, uh, starring uh, Liam Neeson and... Uh, uh, Laura Dern. It comes out uh, February 8th uh, in the United States and it's directed by Hans uh, Peter Moland and it's based off um, I believe a, a Norwegian film In the Order of Disappearance which came out in 2014. Uh, Liam Neeson plays this character who is a snowplow driver seeking revenge against drug dealers who he thinks killed his son. Um, I read about this movie before the trailer was released. Um, apparently it had done some, a couple of film festivals. It was getting a lot of good buzz. And I was like, Liam Neeson, Laura Dern, this plot sounds fucking ludicrous. And then the trailer dropped and all of my, everything was confirmed. All of my hopes this movie looks boss the wall crazy. I'm loving the the setting. Um, I love that Liam Neeson can still kick ass in his 60s. Like, yeah, very Bro, excited. When you're Cold a god pursuit. and have trained Batman and trained Obi Wan Kenobi, you can kind of do that for as long as you want. Yeah, Manny, what do you got? All right, so my second movie is called Chaos Walking, Ooh. based on a trilogy of books called the Chaos Walking trilogy. And effectively, it's a dystopian future where women don't exist. But all living creatures can hear each other's stream of consciousness through this thing called the noise. It is a stacked cast. Tom Holland, Daisy Ridley, uh, Cynthia Erivo, Mads Mikkelsen, and Nick Jonas. I guess they need the young adult appeal of Nick Jonas. He's... He's, he's, actually, he's, he's, he's okay. actually a pretty good actor. I, yeah. I really liked him on, uh, was it Screen Queens? Yeah. He's, he's, he's pretty good on I that. I liked so. him in Jumanji and Goat. Goat he, was, he was really funny in Jumanji. So, uh, director is Doug Lyman. So, that's a thing. Uh, apparently Tom Holland broke his nose during a scene, and it had to be fixed for some shoots for Spider-Man Homecoming. Or Far From Home. Yeah, Far From yeah. Homecoming. So... <laughs> Probably going to be a far from good movie. Disagree. Disagree. Homecoming is garbage. Disagree. But yeah, uh, apparently uh, they're going opposite of The Hobbit and not doing three movies as far as they've said. It's going to sh- condense these three yeah. movies into. <laughs> they're, do- they're doing the opposite. opposite. One book yeah. into three movies? No, no, we're going to go three books into one movie. That is correct. Because <laughs> they realize that there's no need to create 26 movies for three, three books. So after that, uh, I guess I'll go ahead and jump in and say my next movie is A Serenity, which looks to be really interesting, a, a pretty good thriller-esque type of movie, drama, uh, written by written and directed by Stephen Knight, uh, starring Anne Hathaway, Diane Lane, and Matthew McConaughey. Uh, insert your all right, all right, all right jokes here. <laughs> um, but basically, it's about a guy who's now a fishing boat captain who's mysterious past comes back to haunt him so it just looks to be a classic you know thriller twist and turn type of movie and it just given what we've seen in type of in horror movies in the last couple of years i think this has a chance to really stand out especially with the cast that it has right so paul why don't you go ahead and round out the spring season for us (laughs) i have 
what I think is going to be one of the best films of the year, if not the decade. That is the new Joe Cornish film. If you're not familiar with Joe Cornish, stop this video now. Go see Attack the Block. It is one of the finest films made, uh, one of the finest alien invasion films. It introduced Bo John Boyega to the world, to the world proper, not just the small set of England where he was already so somewhat famous, but to everyone. That film gave us Finn in the Star Wars films. So anyway, also go see uh, uh, Joe Cornish also wrote... Uh, Adventures of Tintin, which is also really good. One of, one of Steven, Steven Spielberg's best in the last few years. Anywho, this film is called The Kid Who Would Be King. And Joe here is uh. the most excited to see it with me. Um, <laughs> I honestly think this film just looks charming as shit. Like, <laughs> and of course, here, here I am, a grown man. I've picked two children's films as my must-see of the spring. Because I think they both look, look like a lot of fun. Um, Rebecca Ferguson from... Uh, the mission, the last two Mission Impossible films, plays uh, the mother of a young boy who's being played by Louis Ashbourne Circus. More on him in a minute. Uh, who is, of course, uh, Andy Circus's son. Uh, who is a young boy? Uh, really? Yeah, wow. absolutely. Who's a young boy who finds the sword of King Arthur Excalibur uh, and finds it in a construction site in concrete, and. Uh, now is going to be tasked with saving the world for being possibly the heir to King Arthur. Uh, and Patrick Stewart's playing Merlin. Well, which is <laughs> the older version of Merlin. There's there's another young actor playing Which, which is a nice Merlin. throwback since he was in Excalibur, too. Correct. So, honestly, it just looks silly. It looks fun. It looks like it's going to be a nice escapist film. And sometimes we just need a nice escapist film. And I'm hoping this is going to be it. Uh, all, all joking aside, it does look like it could be just a good time at the theater. And anybody who's not excited to see it is kind of a dick. And, yeah, you're a dick. Lawrence. <laughs> and since we're I'm talking... not excited, Lawrence, either, but I have to. I have to see it. So since we're talking about fun, exciting movies in the theater, why don't you go ahead and kick off the summer, too, Paul? John sheldon has got a new movie coming out! Guys! Godzilla's com got a sequel coming out. This film looks incredible. <laughs> I I cannot be more excited for more monsters destroying more shit. I got two of those films this year. There's a new Godzilla coming out. Gatoran's in it. Fucking Rodan's in it. Is Mothra in it? I don't know. Just destroy the shit out of everything. Godzilla King of Monsters. See this fucking movie! Uh, Mothra is in it. Mothra's in this motherfucker! <laughs> Good luck following that up, Manny. <laughs> My film of... First film is Brightburn. It is James Gunn telling Marvel to go fuck themselves. Yeah, they fired him over some horse shit. If you've seen a James Gunn movie that happened prior to six years ago, you know it's horse shit that he got fired. Now, what he's done is he's taken Superman and turned him into a preteen asshole. <laughs> he is saying, fuck you, Marvel. I'm going to do superhero movies the way I fucking want. And Brightburn is it. He has turned Superman into a horror film. Everything that should have happened in Superman as a being with fucking powers that blow the fuck out of everything by looking at it is going to happen in this film because... Peter Parker has responsibility and power. Superman's a goddamn god that shows up on Earth. James Gunn's going to set this right. So, uh, Brightburn or Godzilla? Who wants in a fight? Brightburn. Yeah, he's, most, he's, most he's a god. Yeah, <laughs> Who won? You decide! <laughs> Superman will punch Godzilla in the fucking neck and shatter his neck off his goddamn spine. That's, that's probably 100% correct. That is that. So, while we're talking about fairy tale monsters and gods from outer space, what do you got, Joe? Um, my first summer pick, It you know what it is, okay? Don't the even fucking play it. Favorite on, <laughs> favorite on Blu ray. <laughs> My, 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 yeah, go ahead and say my favorite now. Go ahead, say it. <laughs> Ooh, uh, so, my first pick for the summer comes out the 21st of June, uh, Toy Story 4. Uh, before everyone discovered John Lasseter was a fucking asshole, he said, 
We're not going to make another Toy Story unless we know it's good. And you motherfuckers saw Toy Story 3, so don't even fucking play and say that was a bad movie. I'll find you. Yeah, you're you're a liar. I'll find Just you. Just like that saying you saw the twist and sorry to bother you. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Or that the king, the kid who would be king looks like a bad movie. You're a liar. They got a talking fork? I mean, <laughs> which, I mean, just like, well, what? And, and Also, Jordan, Jordan Peele is in one of the trailers with Keegan Michael Key, so he's up to two Jordan Peele films this year already. <laughs> that's yeah. right. Like, okay, people in the comments, don't even give me the horse shit. Like, okay, but Forky is an inanimate object. How is he alive? Who gives a fuck? You're excited for this fucking animated movie. God you're damn it. In we case are you're cussing a lot. In case you're wondering, <laughs> the reason Forky's alive is because the googly eyes give him sentience. That's actively how that works. Really? That is actively is how that, that works. Is that canon? That is canon. That is canon. the canon. The second they put the googly eyes on him, he became a toy and no longer just a fork. That's how that works. Eat it. But not with, with Mr. Forky. Forky. <laughs> with Forky during the day. Put him in your mouth. Tongue him down. He can't respond. <laughs> this, this, this intrigues me. Because there's, a, there's an SNL sketch from a few years ago with uh, Christopher mm-hmm. Walken, who's a gardener doesn't trust plants. So he sticks googly eyes on all of them. All of them so are that alive he can make now. eye contact with them. All of them are alive. They are all alive now. They're all alive now, according to Toy Story. Also, <laughs> if I can find if I can find this clip, I'm, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna edit it in here because Is that or we're gonna put a wink in the doobly doo. Googly eyes. Googly eyes. Oh. <laughs> I've oh, been yeah, yeah. I've been so lonely, I've been putting googly eyes on everything. <laughs> so since we're all just having a lot of fun with summer, because it is the blockbuster season, I'm going with Men in Black International, now that we've seen the trailer yes. for it. I'm sorry, another Liam Neeson movie. We're getting Tessa Thompson re-teaming up with Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> yeah, Tessa <and> it, Thompson. <laughs> like, look, look, the last video we just did, we just talked about three different Tessa Thompson movies, and she didn't come up once. What are we doing wrong? <laughs> yeah, she, she could easily be a breakout star. Oh, from already, last year or already, this year. She's already broken out. She broke out in Dear White People. Yeah, that, she that she is such a phenomenal movie. actress, and she shows such a wide range. Um, I'm just really looking forward to it because I'm actually excited about a Men in Black movie again, which is a big thing. That we, hasn't happened in, in 20 years. Yeah, um, so that is, that is absolutely huge. And, of course, we do have the opportunity for a cameo. I just hope it's like a Stanley cameo, a passing thing, like a passing of the torch type of scene. Um, I'd be fine with that. Other than that, I don't really think we need Will Smith or Tommy Lee Jones in this movie. Um, I think this is an opportunity to do what Creed has done for the Rocky series, and to, that's springboard it into a whole new area and really tell new stories. Uh, so that's why I'm really excited about this one. Um, also in the summer for me is hopefully something that's not going to suck as bad as Bohemian Rhapsody because it's another musical biopic. And that second movie for me is Rocket Man, which tells the story of Elton John. Um, I'm looking forward to it. The trailers look like they're fun. They look like they're more whimsical. It looks like it's going to be a more fun movie and a whimsical movie than the seriousness that they try with Bohemian Rhapsody. And failed. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Bryce, Bryce Dallas Howard is going to do a great job. It's written by Lee Hall. Dexter Fletcher's directing it. I just think that this is going to be a really fun time. Um, especially also with Taron Edgerton playing. Eggsy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're talking about Eggsy, who also has another movie coming out later this year, but he's going to be playing Elton John in this one, and I'm just excited for it. Well, who's in a film this year? I'm sad we didn't talk about the last video, Robin Hood. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, that was on my short list for least favorite. Yes. <laughs> so much fun. So back to what we're looking forward to. Uh, Manny, what have you got for us in the summer? All right, so my second summer film is childhood quintessential storybook come to life, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Yes! It is being produced by Guillermo del Toro, going back to kind of his wheelhouse of off-kilter horror movies, gothic architecture, things like that. Um, Not really big names in terms of cast, uh, the biggest name is Dean Norris. Yeah, really? <laughs> find out, boy. It's being directed, though, by Andre Overdahl. Uh, so, th- this is, this, like Bohemian Rhapsody, is a movie that has potential to be good. Whether it lives up to it or not is something else entirely. Well, um, Bohemian Rhapsody didn't live up to its potential. Agreed. 
And but, this movie has the same thing. It has the potential to be really fun. It is nostalgic and connective, but done by Del Toro in a way that could make it an honest masterpiece outside of just the nostalgia factor. Nothing's nothing's shown about it so far outside of one, one set photo, which is the the barn that you get pretty much on the cover. <coughs> uh, so, could could be brilliant, could not be. Either way, hopefully at least it's a fun film. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, Joe, what are you looking forward to next in the summer after Toy Story? So, I'm most looking forward to uh, Quentin Tarantino's comeback, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. You can't call it comeback if, if you, you never went anywhere. anywhere. <laughs> well... That's our. I mean, there's an argument to be said that, you know, when Tarantino uh, lost one of his his longtime working direct or working editors, that like a piece of the qualitative aspects of his film might have suffered. I mean, it's debatable. I know I am a huge fan of his work. I really love The Hateful Eight, um, and. I think it's good to see him working with Leonardo DiCaprio again and Brad Pitt again. Um, Kurt Russell is back. Uh, who fucking doesn't love Kurt Russell? Am I right? He's the best <clears throat> at everything in everything. And except being O'Neill, he's number two. <laughs> and uh, it's it's all set to the backdrop of uh, the uh, Charles Manson murders. Um, it sounds like it's going to be. Uh, interesting time, if not fun time. I'm excited. Okay, Paul, close out the summer for us. Okay, sorry I'm not going to flip out on this one as much, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to go with some counter-programming on this. <laughs> uh, James Mangold, who is the man responsible for uh, the 310 to Yuma remake and everybody's favorite X-Men film, and the only a good X-Men film that was ever made, Logan, uh, has a new film coming out, and I'm I'm interested in it. I'm, I'm going on name recognition on this rather than, than pure excitement because I haven't seen anything other than the facts that James <laughs> Mangold has a new film coming out. It's called Ford versus Ferrari. It's, the, it's, quote, the true story of the battle between Ford and Ferrari to win the Le Mans in 1966. Sounds like it could be fun. Uh, Christian Bale is in it, and of course Mangold uh, teamed with Bale to do the 310 to Yuma remake, and that film is fucking great. Uh, Matt Damon's in it, so that should be a good time. And uh, John Bernthal's got a, a role in it. And who doesn't love John Bernthal these days? He's ever since he got away from The Walking Dead, he's just been on a tail. Again, I haven't seen the trailer. I, I've barely seen any stills from it. But James Mangold's a pretty quality director. I'm I'm willing I'm willing to hang my hat on this one. All right. So Joe, what do you got leading us into into September, October, November, December, or winter or Oscar season, pick a title for it. So, I am super excited about this movie. I saw its predecessor in theaters three times last year. I'm excited about It Chapter 2, baby. I'm talking James McAvoy, Jessica Chastain, Bill Skarsgård, fucking, fucking Bill Hader as adult... Finn Wolfhard? Come on. How many Scars cards do we need in this movie? Um, is Stellan going to be in this? I, mean, I hope so. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> we need all the Scars guard. Uh, I was I was so in love with the first movie. Um, Andy Muschietti really proved that he was a competent director. I had never seen Mama, so I I didn't know how he. It's fun. How he was. The um, better. So you're saying it's damn average? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, and I absolutely, like plus-y. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. Um, and I walked in knowing that he had decided to do a two-parter, so I wasn't. It was, I was not suffering from any kind of affinity war, um, disappointment. I knew exactly what I was getting with this movie. He delivered. Um, it chapter two looks amazing. Everything I've seen. And Paul, what's your first uh, first one on the lot, a docket for you? I'm going to go with a Christmas re- release to start this off. Going Little Women. Now, uh, again, it's just my December's December in the Oscar season's hard because we don't get to watch the Sundance films. We're doing we're doing this film, this shooting on 
January 1st. So Sundance hasn't happened yet. Uh, cons hasn't happened yet. So so the real like Oscar contenders normally aren't announced this early because they haven't picked up distribution. Uh, so mostly I'm going, again, purely off name. This is being written and directed by Greta Gerwig. Who, mm. exactly. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Talk to uh, so Greta Gerwig, for anybody who's watching this who is not familiar with her, she is be. she has written two films directed one. Both those films are fantastic. One was Francis Ha, which she wrote, co-wrote with Noah Baumbach, who directed it. It is a beautiful look at a millennial woman uh, trying to figure herself out. Uh, and then the other one is uh, last year's Lady Bird, last year 2017's Lady Bird, uh, which, of course, she got nominated for writing and directing on because that is a phenomenal film. She is also teaming up with teaming up again with the star of Lady Bird, Saoirse sure, sure. Ronan, who, who's great in everything. Like, yeah, I've never seen a bad film with her. I've seen bad films with her, but she's always good in those bad films. You know who else is going to be in that movie? <laughs> Timothy Chalamet. That that guy. No, I'm kidding. He's he's a really good actor. Uh, he was really good in uh, the criminally overrated Call Me by Your Name. Not overrated. <laughs> I'm just saying that to mess with him. Uh, no, Timothy Chalamet is really good in just about everything. Uh, I still haven't seen Beautiful Boy. I really want to see that. But uh, Emma Watson's also going to be in this as one of the undersized women. Please take <laughs> that as a joke. Uh, Meryl Streep's going to be in it. Laura Dern making another appearance in this video. Bob Odenkirk. It, Chris Cooper. It's a really good cast from top to bottom. And Greta Gerwig hasn't, hasn't let me down yet. So please, Greta. I really wanted to see How I Met Your Father, so I'm sorry that didn't happen. Manny, what do you got? Woman in the Window. Now, this, yet again, could go one of two ways. It could just be another Rear Window remake. Could be, Which the synopsis makes could, it sound like. Could be horribly average. But, I'm led to believe it's being directed by Joe Wright. It's a screenplay adapted by Tracy Letts. It's based on a novel called Woman in the Window. And this cast is stacked. You have Amy Adams, Julianne Moore, Wyatt Russell, Gary Oldham, Brian Tyree Henry, Anthony Mackie. It's a good cast. Just right off top. Music is being done by Trent Reznor, Atticus Ross. Which, who, who did mid-90s? Being produced by Scott Rudden and Eli Bush. This movie has all of the markings to be brilliant. It is a thriller about an agoraphobic woman who apparently sees something out of her window, which leads her to debate whether because of her agoraphobia she's going to involve taking what could be rear window and at least twisting it in that way. Could be great. What you got, Joe? Did, did you mention that it was written by Tracy Letts? He did mention I that. did. Oh, shit. My bad. Who's also going to be in Ford versus Ferrari? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Who also did uh, one of my favorite plays of all time, uh, August Osage County, which was turned yes. into a very mediocre film. True. True. But this movie, I think, has the possibility to be amazing, given the amount of talent and clear high class in every aspect so far as to who's been announced. Woman in the Window in October. Yeah, I, I'm in the same boat as you. With my next pick is it comes out in October. It's the Goldfinch. It's about a boy in New York who's adopted after his mother's killed in a bombing at the Met. Um, it's listed as a drama and directed by John Crowley. And I think this could go one of two ways. It could just absolutely be terrible. Um, it is based off of a book, and we know how that goes historically. Um, but it could really be well well done as well. I mean, we've got another Nicole Kidman movie. On my list, we've got Sarah Paulson in it, um, Ansel Elgort. We've got some good names in here. We've got some interesting choices. Luke Wilson is playing a role in this, so that could go one of two ways as well. Um, so, yeah, I'm just excited about this one just basically off of the name recognition and what the synopsis says. Again, so early in the year, we can't really put a finger on this these latecomers as to what's going to be something to, to jump on now. Yeah. Uh, so why don't we go on back to, why don't we do Paul again, see see what he's got go, cooking for Oscar season. I'm picking a film that comes out November 27th, 
are slated to come out November 27th, because as last year taught us with Elite Battle Angel, <laughs> just because it's slated to come out on the day doesn't mean it's going to. Just I'm still looking forward to that movie. I just didn't want to choose it twice. Yeah. The, the, February 14th. So go, go watch the video where we picked that, just so yeah. you can listen to me and Manny talk so, about it. It's in a good spot. It's in that February studio unknown, but willing to experiment. It's in the Get Out spot, the Black <laughs> Panther spot. Yeah. The, 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 the Lego movie spot. That's right. Let's the Deadpool this. spot. <laughs> there you go. Um, and it's it's a film that is being directed by a director who has only done great films. Never done a bad film in his career. Uh, he did Brick. He did Brothers Bloom. He did Looper. He did Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. The best film in the Star Wars canon. Wow. Ryan Johnson. That's right. I'm going with it. Wow. Just good way to say episode five. <laughs> I'm just, that's a real weird way to say Christmas special, holiday special, oh, life man, special. David, David, David got me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, it's not a film, though. Yeah, it, you it, did say best film. I did say best film, but Lumpawaru, you own my heart. <laughs> Move over, Greta Gerwig. Anyway, Ryan Johnson's got a film coming out called Knives Out, and just based on Ryan Johnson writing and directing it, and him having four. Really, 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 really good films. It's worth putting on my must-see list. And it's got my breakout star from 2018 and it, Catherine Langford. There you go. So I'm looking forward to that one as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and, and it's got Daniel Craig. It's got Chris Evans, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, Michael Shannon, Christopher Palmer, Tony Collette, who almost made my, my performance of the year over over Emily Blunt, Lakeith Stanfield, Don Johnson, Jesus Ricky Lindholm. This, is, this cast is stacked. And it's being led by one of the most competent directors working in Hollywood today. So we're gonna we're gonna see how this goes. So Manny, what do you got? I have a complete unknown in terms of what the hell is gonna come out of this. The only thing I know is the director <coughs> and the name. <laughs> Aaron D. Adam D. Masters of the Universe. I have no idea what's going to happen. You know what I do know? The last time the, it was released in theaters, Frank Langella was skeletal. <laughs> That's all I need. <laughs> this thing is being written up apparently by David S. Goyer and Michael Finch. Good names. Yeah. I, that's all I got. Besides the fact that there will probably be a dearth of toys that they're going to sell you because it comes out just before Christmas. Also, Netflix's She-Ra, Princess of Power, Princesses of Power is fucking amazing. Watch that show. Yeah, do yourself a favor. It's it's honestly one of the best shows on Netflix. Maybe the best cartoon on Netflix. Yeah, that's... I don't know. I don't know. Ar Archer's on Netflix. Archer's... You heard what I said. <laughs> I didn't stutter at any point. So my movie is... Second movie for the Oscar season is Midway. Which the synopsis is, the story of the Battle of Midway, told by the leaders and the soldiers who fought it. That's it. But it is a movie because we've got casting. It's not a documentary. Um, it is being directed by Roland Emmerich, which tells us it can go one of two ways. And if it goes the other way, we all know mm -hmm. it's going to be, we're going to get more Pearl Harbor than we're going to get Midway. Yeah, either we're getting Independence Day or we're getting Independence Day 2. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, I mean, it, it's got Patrick Wilson. It's got Woody Harrelson, Luke Evans, Mandy Moore, Dennis Quaid. It's got solid actors in it. And we're not talking anymore. <laughs> I would love me some Dennis Quaid. It's got, an, it's got Nick Jonas showing up in it as well. Yo, Nick Jonas, what's going <laughs> on? <else? laughs> so, apparently, um, the, you know, it, like I said, it has the opportunity to be really great or, again... As with movies already slated for December this far out, it could be really, really bad. I'm just starting to wonder what happened to Joe and the Ugly Jonas. <laughs> Speaking of Joe and the Ugly Jonas, <laughs> what do you got to finish things out for the holiday season? So, for the holiday season, um, I picked A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. I almost picked this myself. Uh, starring Tom Hanks. It's really surprising to me how fast a turnaround production on this on this movie has been going from uh, pre-production um, into shooting principal uh, photography uh, and... Uh, a money-making documentary will do that to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, 
they're riding the success of uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor, <clears throat> which could be iffy. Um, so I'm looking at the director, uh, Mika Fitzman Blue. Um, uh, she wrote on um, uh, Transparent, um, and then the writer, uh, Noah Harpster, uh, also wrote on Transparent and uh, One Mississippi, starring Tig Notaro. Uh, Tig Notaro. Uh, yes, a wonderful show. Um, could go either way. I mean, there's, it's still far out to tell. It, it sounds like it could be kind of super schlocky, um, but I'm interested in uh, the portrayal uh, Tom Hanks might bring to it. Uh, the cast looks pretty good as well. Tom Hanks, Matthew Reese, Chris Cooper... And apparently it's supposed to be centered around uh, the format of the story is supposed to be centered around this reporter who's who's collecting information via interviews with Fred Rogers. So that could be an interesting dynamic, uh, seeing Fred, Fred Rogers and his aspect and view on life uh, carry over to this kind of maybe jaded uh, journalist. So, Well, there's our movies that we're looking forward to. And since Manny set the president last year in the middle of a movie by dropping a, a breakout star name, now we're going to talk about our breakout stars. And uh, since Joe finished out the year, I'm going to let him start off with the with it with who he thinks his breakout's going to be. Number one, breakout star 2019, David Harbor. You now I know what you're saying. Okay, well. He's been in Stranger Things, and he was in Suicide Squad as that one guy. Yeah, I get it. He's really great in Stranger Things um, as, um, um, what's the sheriff's character's name? Off the top of my head. Um, he's the sheriff. He's the sheriff. Um, but again, this speaks to, like, you know, he does a lot of television. In film, he plays uh, the character who just blends into the background. This is the time where he's really going to shine as Hellboy. Hellboy looks looks like it could be a lot of fun. Um, I'm a big fan of the the other two incarnations uh, under David... Uh, David. Uh, Guillermo del Toro. Graham, Graham del Toro. Yeah. Graham del Toro. Yeah. Graham del Toro. Yeah. I can't do that. <laughs> um, Guillermo del Toro. Guillermo. Yeah. Guillermo del Toro. <laughs> also, his name is Hopper. Hopper. Sheriff Hopper. Um, I'm really excited about this movie. I feel like this could have been an opportunity for David to shine. Um, and, yeah, Hellboy. Paul, what do you got? All right. Circling back to uh, to the kid who would be king, I'm just going to go ahead and throw out uh, Andy Serkis's little little baby boy, Louis Ashbourne Circus, as my breakout star of the year. I'm going on mostly the fact that I think this film looks charming. He's the lead. Uh, he's he's mostly done voice work up to this point. He's had a couple of roles in films like uh, Alice Through the Looking Glass and on TV shows like Taboo, which is an English series. Uh, he had a he had a voiceover part in Mary and the Witch's Flower, which is a pretty, pretty good anime. Um, he was just in his father's uh, Mowgli Legend of the Jungle, his boot. Uh, so if if the performances of Andy Serkis can run in the blood of his offspring, I'm really looking forward to seeing Louis Ashburn Serkis uh, do The Kid Who Would Be King. Because, again, I think this film looks charming, and this guy's a dick for not wanting to see it. I'll see it. But he doesn't want to. Yeah. So my breakout star is much like yours. Does a lot of TV, does a lot of background roles. Don't really think of him as a main star. And that's Zachary Levi, who's Shazam. Um, I just think that having seen him in Chuck, having heard him do his voiceover work for Tangled as Flynn Rider, he's continued both of those roles in different ways over the years. And again, he's always been in the background. I think this is his chance to really step up and say, hey, I'm the guy. Um, he's done superhero work before. He uh, took over in Thor, where he played uh, 
Fandor, Fandral, excuse me, uh, one of the brothers three. Uh, so he's got some idea how the superhero mentality works. Plus, Chuck was pretty much a, a cheap superhero in the uh, television series. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. I just, I really think that this is Zachary Levi's moment to shine and having seen his prior works, I think this is his chance to, to get the attention where it needs to be for him to continue to soar. I'll just say, I think Zachary Levi's best role up to this point has been his hot dog man in the Lego Jurassic World, the Indominus Escape. <laughs> where he does voiceover, yes he does. <laughs> Uh, he Actually, does. I've watched that a few times because uh, uh, my, my four-year-old loves it. So. so, yeah, he's he's done quite a few voiceover works and stuff as well. So, he's a pretty solid, solid actor, and just it's time for him to get his due. And Manny, the man who started this whole shenanigans, why don't you go ahead and close this out? They've all made fine picks, <laughs> but they have not picked the breakout star of the year. The breakout star is Cynthia Ervo. Cynthia Ervo, to you guys, uh, two roles earlier this year. She was Darlene Sweet in Bad Times at the Al Royale. She was Belle in Widows. Prior to that, she plays Celie in the Purple Rain revival on Broadway. So in 2015, she wins Best Lead Actress, Tony. 2017, she takes home a Grammy for Best Musical Album Ensemble. This year, she has three movies coming out. She will be in Chaos Walking, one of the films I'm looking forward to, playing Hildy. She will be Harriet Tubman in the movie Simply Called Harriet. And she will be the wife in a movie called Needle in a Time Stack, about a husband who has to rebuild his marriage after a time-traveling rival destroys his marriage. She will be Breakout Star of the Year, when we do this list all over again next year, you guys will be talking about her. Films across a myriad of genres, already multi-talented, racking up awards, not on, not in movies. She is the woman you need to be talking about. Can I just say how, how much I enjoy the fact that your breakout star of last year was in Bad Times at the or El Royale? And your breakout star coming out of this year is in Bad Times at the El Royale. That's right. Good fucking job, Drew Goddard. <laughs> <laughs> Furthermore, look for whatever one of these three movies for next year's pick for Manny's breakout star of the year That's right. of 2020. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it, folks. There's what we're looking forward to and who we think is really going to shine this year in the starlight. Uh, let us know what you think. Are there What movies are you looking forward to outside of Endgame, Shazam, Captain Marvel, etc., etc. Uh, let us know in the comments down below. As always, feel free to like, subscribe, share our stuff. I'd like to thank Paul, Joe, and Manny for joining me again. And uh, look forward to our reviews for these movies and more in the coming year on Just Born Movies. Until then, have a good one.